Trio Valley Varicina 2022. Udacy is setting the pace. It's a really hilly race. Um, part of profile will be on the screen. And it's sort of just like up and down all day. No super long climbs. Longest climb is maybe like 1.8k in the finishing circuits. But it's pretty crazy. Anyway, Pogaccio is here. Um, Bala was here. Nibali's penultimate race. Um, and those are sort of the main hitters. Higita as well. Anyway, Tom Thomas Gloag, who I've been banging on about for some time, puts in a big, big launch here. I thought it was Vingar when I was watching it live, but it's Gloag. 10.7k to go. It's an interesting move. Probably one that is not best suited, uh, but like the wisest, but he doesn't really have much of a sprint. So in that sense, it does make sense uh, to try and get away from the bunch because otherwise, you know, against people like Valverde and Pagacha, he just has no chance. Anyway, Enric Mass decides to go across, which again, I think is a pretty wise move, to be honest, uh, due to the fact that he has one of the favourites for the sprint in Alejandro Valverde behind him. So anyway, he actually managed to get across. There are a couple of people interested, like Aja Dezer, uh, for Benoit Cosnefoir and Pierre Latour as well was there for Total Direct Energy, or di they're just called Direct Energy now. Uh, Mass gets across to to um, Gloag, but then EF and mainly UAE, to be fair, chase it back. UAE have quite a good uh, squad for this, for Pagacha, like Corvi and Ulissi are super, super strong in these sorts of races. So hard to get away. Um, and I guess the thing is for Mass, you know, he's never going to do well on this from a sprint. So again, he's got to go long. So it's sort of rude not to. And Movistar also have Aina Rubio in the group, um, who's looking really, really good, actually. He he had really promising under-23 Giro results, but then just never could, could do much. Obviously, he was in the break um, in the Giro uh, in 2020 uh, with Ken de Garcia going bim, bam, bim, bam. But um, that is about it. Anyway, a flyer here from UA, uh, from EF, sorry, um, just trying to create hard, but Mass is straight over that. Once Mass is back in the group, it's really obvious it's going to be a sprint. Vincenzo Nibali attacks with 3.7 kilometers to go. This is his penultimate race. He's in the drops, Landissimo style, um, and looking really, really good. You can see as you desire trying to chase this back, Pagacha's on the move, and Enric Mass uh, is also looking like he needs to close this gap. We're just going to show the last three and a half K um, in, in total because it's a pretty interesting race all round. Uh, as to the tactics, I think Nibali, again, you know, if he won this, the, the Tifosi in Italy would have gone absolutely mental. So he has to go. Um, again, Lombardia, you know, it's one of his, his like best places to race. Here's the highlights again. You can see he's looking so, so strong um, on this attack. And to be honest, like, he looks good, but I just don't think he has the numbers required these days to actually do anything. So that's a bit of a, a, bit of a shame. But with three kilometers to go, like, he's still there. But it, it really, the, the profile didn't look too hilly, but it is just up and down. And Enric Mass closed this so easily. You can see how hard it is because if you look about six, seven wheels back, everyone is swinging and there's massive gaps between them. Not now as much, but just before when they showed Enric Mass closing. But Mass looks like he's on a Sunday club run. And I think, okay, for sure, Enric Mass always looks pretty chill when he rides a bike, but he's looking really, really good. I think here they should have made it harder. Um, I, think, I think Mass shouldn't have waited because... You now get an attack, I believe, by Rudy Mollard, um, which is like, you know, fair enough. Uh, you know, that it is what it is. But I do think that they should have attacked because Pagacha is a little bit isolated here. And they instead they just put Rubio on the front, which is fine. But, you know, it's just not going to do anything. And I think this is Mollard goes for, again, he sort of got, got not boxed, but, you know, basically boxed on his previous attack. So he couldn't get out. And Enric Mas closed it so easily. But here you're like, you've got three guys. Does Bala really need a lead out? I think I'd just go for it and try and really push other people to chase, um, which helps Bala. But I think it's more like, you know, can you back Bala to beat Poggy in a sprint? No. So I think you need to just cause more carnage, um, and your best chance is really getting someone up the road, because who is going to chase? There aren't that many strong teams there. So I think in hindsight, probably wasn't the uh, the wisest of moves in reality, uh, just to lead him out. Um, obviously, you know, it's in this is hindsight and all the rest of it. But I do think... Uh, it's an interesting tactic from Movistar, and to be honest, like, there's quite a small group, not many riders here, one guy you really didn't see here was actually Adam Yates, he, he kept himself super, super quiet, um, which I think was interesting, because again, for me, it's like, okay, yeah, he's he's got a good punch for a small guy, but like, it's it's not really, um, it's not really comparable to Pagacha or Bala or Hikita or someone like that, who's, you know, got a well-renowned for their sprint, so I, I do think it's an odd decision, um, for Yates not to try anything. You can see he further back, looking pretty comfortable, but quite far back. Yates is there on the right-hand side, sort of like 30 wheels or t maybe 15 wheels back. Um, again, he's just sitting. I guess at this point, though, like, you know, if you attack Rubio, it's tough. But, 
And especially when you've got Mass, who's probably got the best climbing legs here, I reckon. Like, he looks so, so strong. So it is going to be a hard one to, to get away. But I do think that people should have been a bit more adventurous in reality. Um, Pierre Latour, again, like, he's got a decent sprint, but, you know, we didn't see him doing too much. And I think it's unlike Pierre. I know maybe he's trying to calm his racing down a little bit because he used to race like an absolute nutter and just go on non-stop attacks. But I do think on this one, maybe an, a sort of one one kilometer solo bid would have been a good idea for, for quite a lot of riders, to be honest, who, who we wouldn't really back in the sprint as much as um, as the favourites. And I think especially with Bagaccia, knowing what he did um, in Canada and Montreal, I think it was it was good. But anyway, here you can see uh, Mass does go, but he doesn't really, you know, go for a big attack. It's more just like sort of upping the pace. Obviously, like, it's hard, but it's not like he went from five wheels back. Like, he, Pagaccia was on his wheel, like he was never going to get away. Um so I do think in that sense, it, it, it wasn't the best of attacks. And now it's like sort of downhill. Um, I think, you know, that was a fine, a fine move for Movistar. You know, it made it hard. Um, it made people more isolated. But if you're going to have Bala, who's never going to attack because he trusts his sprint, it, it did seem not the wisest of moves. Uh, well, not, not unwise, but just didn't really achieve anything. Well, I think if he had attacked from further back, he might have done going into the final kilometre. Now, Pagaccia is very near the front, probably not ideal because Enric Mass is, you know, he's a strong man, but he can't lead people out left, right, like the whole way. Um, people are going to come up. If you, it's when you start to look sort of four wheels back, if people are two or three abreast, then you know it's definitely not a super, super hard lead out. Um, at the moment, because it's going uphill, Masses can obviously do a decent job. And you can see people like are really trying to start to panic, starting to move up because they know it's coming towards the sprint. Uh, and Yates there on the left hand side doing a big shift to move up and that's the thing that's when you want to have a teammate to help you move up because you know if you're stuck at the back and you've got to do a big surge in the wind it's really not conducive to a good sprint because you're just already battered you can see Higita on the right hand side again moving up um, in the wind not what you want to do especially when he has teammates so this is like coming into some of the last corners here um, into the final of this sprint we're going to go have the heads on shot here and you can see Bala goes super super long but Poggy comes out of his wheel and just batters him and it's not, it's not actually that close in the end. I know this is a zoomed out view. There's no sort of helicopter footage, but um, Pagatra actually takes it pretty easily, to be honest, in the end. Um, I mean, Higita was coming close, but against Bala, it was um, a decent win. But anyway, that's all the footage I could find, unfortunately, that I couldn't really see any helicopter footage. Um, but anyway, just watching. Hope you enjoy this video, and I'll see you in the next one.